Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we're looking at the Anycubic Viper. Now, if you're watching this video, you would have seen the title is probably going to be self-explanatory. You are probably here if you've had a problem with this sensor. Now, Anycubic have very kindly sent me a brand new sensor, which uh, I'm hoping to install here and show you how and why these problems are happening. Now, I did have this problem with one of my Vipers and Anycubic just literally just sent this out to me. Uh, it's just arrived this morning, so thank you to them for, for being so uh, quick to uh, to ping that out. Now, what I was getting is the nozzle, when I was trying to level, was smashing straight into the bed. Now, I've noticed on the forums and on the Facebook group and even on my YouTube channel that people have been posting that they've also got this problem as well. And I'm hoping that this is either going to solve it or we're going to look at why this is happening and this is the video to uh, to basically introduce that and to do that. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out or kind of puts you in the picture of where we are with this at the moment. Um, Anycubic have been really good about this and, you know, they are working with me to try and make this better. And, uh, you know, not a lot of companies really do that. So uh, let's, uh, let's be cool about it. But please hit that subscribe button and whack us a like as well. And let's get straight on into it, shall we? Right then, if you're all sitting comfortably, then I shall begin. Now, we're going to start by unplugging that troublesome connector that I know one or two people have had a few problems with. I made a video on it uh, a week or so ago on how to remove the glue and unplug it. And, you know, it's sod's law, but we're now going to be unplugging the extruder shroud. Uh, there are four screws on the back of this. It is a little bit fiddly to get it undone, but once you've done that and obviously you've removed the clip, you should be able to lift the extruder straight out and it will just sort of fall to the right hand side. Uh, don't forget you have got three fans placed inside of there so you you know be very very careful on how you remove this and not to pull any cables out and not to snag anything as well. Uh, at this point I will point out as well that you should have your 3D printer switched off. So the part we're actually looking at is on here. So um, it's disconnectable from here and here and here. Um, so what I'm probably going to do straight away is I'm just going to drop the hot end out. So the hot end or the extruder is held on by two screws and also the sensor is held on by two screws at the back. They're exactly the same screws on each one, uh, so it should be relatively easy to undo these. Obviously when the, when the Z-axis drives downwards, this should lift very slightly uh, and that's what gives you that pivot point. So obviously to replace this, it should just be these two screws and these two screws. You put it all back together again, job done. But let's just have a quick look as to, if I power it up now, if I'm getting any lights or if I'm actually seeing any signal being sent, because what should happen here, when this is on, um, this this should give you a, a red light when it's, when it's engaged. So let's just see if there's anything there at the moment. Obviously we'll have to plug this back in. Let's click in back in a sec. So let's see if we get anything. Nothing there as such, I can see. You would expect it to have a little bit of tolerance on this as well so you know i'm not seeing anything at this point uh which makes me think actually i think that this is dead so i guess the best way to test that would be to unplug this one and maybe look to plug this one back in so immediately you should be able to see that there is a little red light on down here now it says to me that 100 percent it's definitely going to be this sensor that's at fault how and why that's gone wrong I don't know. When I was chatting to the engineers, they were mentioning about the fact that when it's hit the bed, actually the nozzle was off. So what essentially that's done is it's actually taken this perhaps further than it needed to be. So let me just unplug that one again. Be careful he does it. There we go. And what I'm going to do is plug this one back in, see if we get any registration at all from that. Because obviously it doesn't. it's not helpful to you guys if I'm doing this and you know, you don't have the sensor to replace it, but this is going to be where the problem lies. Um, absolutely 100%. And what I can feel here is almost it kind of, like a little click, but I don't know if that's off the wheel or if that's off this sensor. So, so anyway, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It looks like it's a dead sensor on, in this case. So what we're going to do is just whip that off again. Like I say, it's just two screws here at the top. Okay, so that's both screws taken out now. And what I'm gonna do is just grip that and take that out around the back there. And there we go. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to why this is dead. Um, because it looks exactly the same as the other one, to be honest. Um, so I'll just have a look and see if I can notice any 
any kind of visible differences between the two of these. Doesn't seem to be anything too huge there. Can't can't honestly see that there's any real difference there at all between the two. So you can see again, hopefully when it focuses, you can see that the uh, little red light is on again. So I'm assuming if I push this up, yeah, you're gonna get that, that slight glitch there. So as soon as it hits the bed, that should give you that little, that little glitch. So that's good, so I think that's a fix. Um, but does that mean that it's gonna stop the problem completely? Or is it gonna crash into the bed? Well, only time will tell. And uh, we'll give that a quick go now and see if this actually levels correctly. So for the reassembly, I have switched the printer off in this case. Uh, I don't want anything else to go wrong with this printer at this point. So what I would suggest is as you put the shroud on, don't forget to also make sure that you push that clip back in and it's clicked into the right connector. Um, and the pins are straight in there as well. You don't want any kind of mischief happening. Again, there's four screws at the back. Tighten them up, make sure they're nice and placed well inside of the uh, extruder. And hopefully we should be good to go. Let's give it a go. So what we're gonna do then is we're just gonna turn this sucker back on again. And I've just lowered this down back to where it was. And we're gonna hit the prepare button and we're gonna hit leveling and auto level. And press okay. Now obviously make sure that you have plugged this back in again and make sure the clip is down. What will happen now is obviously it's just homed and the next thing will be that it will heat the bed and then it will start, hopefully start its probing um, and hopefully we'll have a result and that will be a fix. So we'll wait patiently for that to happen. So here we go, here we go. So the moment of truth now. Yes. So whereas before there, it did obviously smash into the bed, it's now not doing that. So it's now gonna probe the entire bed. So when is a fix not really a fix? Well, it's obviously fixed it in this case. And obviously this little sensor is causing some problems there. So what I would what I would first and foremost suggest that you do is make sure that you have got that little red light on. And if you move that around, you are gonna be finding some continuity with the light going on and off. Um, again, it should be on. When you push that up, it will then flicker off um, just momentarily. So it just gives you that signal back. Obviously this is gonna be causing a problem to one or two people out there. It might be a bigger problem, we don't know yet. I think I've seen around about five people that have also had similar problems. The way to test this, of course, is going to be removing the extruder parts and testing to make sure that that works um, on red. Let me know how you guys get on. And obviously, if you do have any problems, reach out and, uh, and speak to me or hit us up on the Viper Facebook group or leave a comment below. Um, yeah, not much I can say about that, really. It's a bit disappointing, but we are back working again. So happy days hopefully this might be an isolated incident who knows you know at the moment i've seen a very very small amount of people that have had the kind of problem similar to this might not be the same problem who knows but if this has helped you hit the subscribe button hit the like button and uh, leave me a comment below and we will see you next time take care bye for now